All right, Bill, this past weekend, I went to Vegas to visit my brother and his buddy who currently reside there. They actually caught your most recent show in Vegas and had a phenomenal time. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. He said, I left last Thursday from Tampa, and as soon I touched down in Vegas, I received an out-of-nowhere text from the girl that got away. I was shook. This broad used to live in Tampa about two and a half years ago, but she moved out to L.A. to pursue her career as an actress. The two of us attended the University of Tampa a few years ago and had an on-again, off-again relationship. Long story short, I was in a relationship with another girl. We went on break, and I met this girl and was hooked. So anyways, her text said, hey, who are you going to Vegas with because I'm going to be there this weekend too? Uh, my guess is that she had seen my social media. She had been. My guess is that she had seen on my social media that I was going to be in Vegas. When I read the text, I was very surprised and pretty pumped because we hadn't talked in a long time. And like I said, she was the one that got away. She's absolutely gorgeous, and she also happens to be a really good person as well. Jesus Christ, people, what could go wrong here? We hooked up in Vegas, and it was amazing to see her. We all went out, did our thing, and had one of the best weekends I've had in my life. I'd give you more details, but you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. All right, you gave her the old meat hammer. Way to be subtle. Anyways, <clears throat> the reason why I'm writing to you, though, is because on the plane right back to Tampa, I was thinking about mine and this girl's relationship and all of our history. And a pretty comical slash genius story came to mind about her. I know this is getting long, but I hope it's not as long and boring as that guy writing to explain the fucking origins of Jimmy's a couple of weeks ago. Jesus Christ. Uh, but anyways, like I said, when I first met her, I was immediately attracted to her natural beauty, beauty and her personality. She is one of these ladies who didn't have to wear makeup or do anything special to look sexy. However, one of the first weekends we spent together, I wake up in, with her in bed one morning. I go to give her a kiss, and I am, I am immediately troubled. The way the morning sun was shining into the window on her face exposed something I wasn't ready for that early in the morning. This broad has dark hair, and for the first time I noticed she had some dark hair above her lip. Eee. I was really surprised I didn't catch it before, but it wasn't a thick mustache or anything. It was just like the peach fuzz a 12-year-old boy has before he starts shaving regularly. Regardless, I was, taking, I was taken back, and from, that morning, and from that point on that morning, it was all I could notice. Ah, Jesus. Isn't it crazy how visual guys are? That's it. Take the most beautiful woman in the world, you put a, give her a mustache, we, we can't, that's all we can see. It's like I'm kissing fucking Burt Reynolds here. All right, so when I went home, I had to devise a master plan, Operation Mustache Removal. I like this girl way too much, and she was still very hot with the, ex even with the stash, but I needed a way to get rid of it because I wanted to help her out while also helping myself. All right, now this is why I picked this one here. Listen to this guy. She's got a gorgeous fucking woman. Everything about her is perfect, except she has a fucking mustache. Now, how the hell do you bring it up to somebody that you care about, that they have a mustache, and is fucking turning you off? There's no way to do that without sabotaging the relationship or, or really hurting the other person. The only way to do that is if you just completely don't give a shit about the other person and just say, hey, you know, if there's any way you could, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to fucking say it. Well, this is what he did, and this was genius. He said, uh, since we just started seeing each other, I didn't want to come out and say, babe, babe, you shaved today? Seemed a little self-conscious that it is, so I didn't want to tell her and embarrass her or anything like that. I needed a way to remove this stash without being involved. Hence, I did what needed to be done. Listen to this fucking brilliant conspiracy. I called my trustworthy buddy who was playing hockey in Canada at the time and told him I needed him to do me a solid dude. I filled him in on the situation and he was willing to help me out. Since he had a weird random Canadian number at the time, I gave him my chick's number and told him to text her and simply say, you have a mustache. I ordered him to say nothing else and not to respond under any circumstances. He texted me back about 20 minutes later and said, mission complete. So this fucking lady, just to get you caught up in case you're confused here with my reading, she gets a random text from a Canadian number out of nowhere that just says you have a mustache. I can't imagine her fucking stomach must have dropped. It's when he goes, he, anyways, he goes, later that night, I met her at the bar and she was looking extraordinarily sexy. She seemed, she seemed to have a little pep in her step. I walked up to give her a kiss and I looked above her lip and the peach fuzz mustache was gone. Clean and soft as a baby's bottom. I was very happy how it played out. I helped myself out because that would have bothered me, and I helped her become even sexier.
Best part being, she had no idea that I orchestrated that mission. I didn't have to talk about it, bring it to her attention, and hurt her feelings or anything like that. I just had a broad with a clean upper lip. Thought I'd share. Go fuck yourself. Dude, that is absolute genius. And now I just got paranoid because I said what fucking school you went to and all that shit. I hope you don't get in trouble. But if you, somehow your woman is listening to this, a guy does something like that not because he's being a dick. It's because he cares for you. And uh, we don't know how to... Uh, we, we, we don't have those skills. How, how do you tell somebody that? There's no way to do it. I think what he did was genius. Nobody got fucking hurt. You felt great about yourself. He cared about you enough, sweetheart, in case you're listening, that he came up with a plan that, you know, if he put it in another area, he could have, like, whacked JFK. So there you go. He came up with an enigma wrapped up in a riddle, however that fuck that goes. And, uh, and you look even better. I would hope somebody would do that for me. All right. Girlfriend in Fantasy League. Hey, Bill, love the podcast. But, 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 thank you. I've been in a fantasy football league for 10 years. It was started by one of my best friends and has been the same 12 guys for a decade. I don't even know how bands have put... Uh, I don't even know bands that have been together that long. So this year, my buddy who started the league decided to boot out two lifelong members in favor of his girlfriend and the girlfriend of a friend of ours. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did those other two guys who got booted, did they do anything? I mean, if he was going to add the ladies, why did those other two guys have to leave? Wow. All right. Okay, well, I'm sucked into this story. He said, I immediately called bullshit and said point blank to his face, if she wasn't sucking your dick, then she wouldn't be in the league. Oh, dude. That right there is a game changer. You can't say it. What if he marries this woman? Always, there's a rule for you guys. Always be careful what you say about the woman your guy is with because you never fucking know. You never know. And I'm sure there's some listeners that have stories and if you'd like to contribute them to the podcast where, uh, you know what's even fucking worse is when your buddy, he says fucked up shit about the girl. You know, about what a whore she is in bed and she's fucking his brains out, blah, 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 blah and tells you all these, these details and then the jackass ends up falling for her and then he has to fucking break up with you because he's not going to break up with her because every time he looks at you, he thinks, oh, you know, he, he knows how this girl, my, my future wife sucks my dick, you know. Anyways, plowing ahead. He's trying to defend his decision by saying she at least knows a little about sports. Dude, this is awful. This guy wasn't raised right, man. This is just, this is fucking terrible. He said the fact of the matter is that she is from New York and knows who the Jets are. That's the extent of her football knowledge. He thinks I'm overreacting. You're not overreacting. He didn't ask anybody else. You've had 12 for the last 10 years, and he just removed two of the original band members. Dude, this isn't even funny. This is, re this is really upsetting to me. He thinks I'm overreacting, but I think of it the same scenario if you had... If you have one night a year to have a guy's night with your buddies, and then you get to the bar, you see that your friend has invited his girlfriend to guy's night. Exactly. He even told me that she, she's the one who asked if she could join, which obviously to me means he had no intentions of inviting her, but when he was backed into the corner, his balls shot up into his throat, and he couldn't say no. Exactly. It's not just a fantasy league, but a clear indication that she's going to slowly start chipping away at everything else in the rest of his life. Exactly. In summation, his girlfriend wanted in, and he crumbled and said yes. Am I reading too much into this? Am I overreacting? I'd like to know because he's getting pissed at me for being pissed at him. Absolutely not, sir. Everything that I was going to tell you, you already know, and you wrote in this email. Okay? You ran down the mats. You went off the little fucking springy board. You hit the fucking hobby horse. You did your little fucking Mary Lou Litton flip. And you stuck the landing. You get a perfect 10 on that one, sir. You are 100% right. You know what? You know what my move would be? I would start my own fantasy league. All right? And I would invite everybody else in that fucking league. Well, I wouldn't do that because that's, that's a chick move. Make people decide. Now, this is what I, I wouldn't be as harsh with him and just be like, no, dude, what you did was absolute bullshit. And I guarantee you, I would tell him it. She's going to start chipping away with you, at, at your life. Your balls are up in your throat. Um, but that's going to end your friendship with them. But here's the deal, dude. There are other fantasy football leagues to join. All right? And uh, that, that's one of those ugly things about that chapter of guys' lives after um, college. 
you know, when you went to grade school together or you met them in college, guys in college or whatever, but you guys have this unbelievable bond, like you went to fucking war together. Um, if one of your friends is a pussy, you know, he has a, he has a chance of meeting somebody who's going to splinter the group, you know, and this isn't an anti-woman thing. This is more like an anti-pussy guy kind of thing where, uh, you know, there are controlling suffocating people on both sides, men and women. And I know that there's women listening and they, one of their best girlfriends started dating some fucking overbearing insecure douchebag guy. And the first thing they do is they cut him off from their friends and then it's the coworkers, then the friends and then their family. And they stick him under a fucking little glass or something. So, uh, yeah, you know what, dude, the, the worst, the sad thing is, is you're, you're going to lose a couple of friends. Sometimes that happens and uh, you just have to be content about it. And, you know, and I think it's really important for men and women to have men only and women only social events that they can go to once a week or a couple times a month and just hang out with the fellas and hang out with the ladies and just whatever. I think it's really, really healthy. It gives you something to look forward to. It gives you a place where you can just vent about your anything you fucking want in, in a group of people that 100% is going to understand and you don't have to worry about hurting anybody's feelings or offending on anybody. I think it's, tr it's really, really fucking healthy. And this guy's fucking with that. And, uh, and he didn't put it to a vote. What, what is he, the grand poobah of this shit? I don't know. There, there's so many ways you can go with that, just depending, on, depending on how much you want to stir up the pot. You guys should put it to the vote. This would be great. Put it to a vote. Dude, have this be like your Arab Spring, but with a fantasy football league, and just vote that cunt out, and then you become the dictator, and you move into the palace. How about that? Whatever, dude. You're 100% right. I would just I would choose my words a little more carefully. Um... Don't say that he didn't have the balls. Just say, listen, this was something that we did together for 12 years. And uh, I'm really disappointed and shocked that you made this big a move and removed two other members and didn't include anybody else in it. I don't think that it was done right. And I think we should put this to a vote. That's what we should do. And if he gets mad and he starts yelling, don't lose your cool. Just keep stating your opinion calmly. And, you know, if he's going to be a bitch about it, let him be a bitch about it. And I would actually, for your own health. Dude, she only thing she knows is the gen. She's going to be like, wait a minute, who's that? <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't know anything. <laughs> she's going to try to do that. You know that thing where women try to act like they're dumb because they think it's cute? Uh, you know what I would do, sir? I would just cut your losses. Just fucking. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more annoyed I'm getting. And it's ruined my fucking day and I'm not even in it. I don't even like fantasy football. All right, banker cunts. All right, Billy Boy. Uh, so have you heard about these greedy cunts at Goldman Sachs? That was kind of a national story. What, did they do something else? You said they cornered a large share of the market in aluminum and then betted on the futures of aluminum with the price going up. Sounds illegal? It is, but of course those stupid fucking cunts found a loophole in the law. The loophole is that 25 tons of aluminum is supposed to leave the warehouse every day. However, the law doesn't specify where it had to go. So they would just send it to another warehouse of theirs, and technically it didn't leave the warehouse. In the New York Times article, they interviewed people who previously worked at these warehouses. They would jokingly send each other messages and say, hey, get, hey, get that, that shipment of aluminum. But really, they were just transferring it to an adjacent warehouse. Uh, I, I, this is, I don't even get what the fuck's going on here. Of course, Goldman Sachs has recently posted its largest quarter profit of over $2 billion. When can we take these bankers out into the street and just shoot them? All joking aside, this shit is insider trading and they should be prosecuted, but we know that won't happen. Uh, P.S. Know you're busy for a while, but when are you coming back to Atlanta? Uh, I actually don't know. I don't know when I'm coming back to Atlanta. You know what? That's one of those things I should have read that 20 times in a row and learned what exactly is going on. I think this is basically how they get away with it, is that there's too many people like myself that don't even understand what was going on there. All that stuff, betting on futures, I don't even understand what any of that means. I was just in the stock market long enough to realize, like, hey, I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm, I'm, I, I basically felt like I was standing at a crap table. Uh, I put my money on a crap table, in a, and I wasn't even in the casino. You know, I was in a different state, and then I was calling somebody else up going, hey, how's the game going? You know, I saw a couple of stats at the bottom of the screen, and I can't even read them. 
I don't even know if the game's even being played. That's what I can't get past about everybody listening to this podcast. You don't, you don't have any of the money that you earn every week. You don't have any of it. You ever think about that? It's a number on a piece of paper. You take it to the bank, and then they stick that number in your ATM. Then occasionally you go to the ATM, and they give you a piece of paper that is only worth something because everybody says it's worth something. But you really have nothing of value. What you have is the piece of paper that's uh, part of the lie. So that, that is the genius of all of this shit. And through penalties and fees and taxes and all that crap, they get you even further removed where you have to invest it. You know, why do I have to fucking invest it? You can't, I don't know. You don't get anything. You don't get anything of fucking value. The only thing that has value is the lie. And as long as the lie continues, I mean, isn't this the month where we go to raise the debt ceiling every fucking year? Eventually that wave's going to crash. Um, I don't know. I hope when the wave crashes that all races and all economic levels somehow put down their differences and they all come together and we just start walking towards gated communities. All right? There you go. How much are you stealing that you have to live behind a gated community? They li they're sitting there acting like they're, they're afraid that we're going to steal their shit. It's like you got your shit by stealing from us. All right? Anarchy? Sorry. All right, where am I going here? The next one. Low libido girlfriend. Uh, all right. Hey, Bill, I've been with my current girlfriend for two years, and we've had our ups and downs ups and downs relationship wise but even at the lowest points we still get back together okay is there a reason you get back together is it because you actually love this girl or are you just lonely and don't want to go through the pain of a breakup uh, the problem is at this point in the relationship it seems like I'm the only one interested in sex maybe it's just a man thing or how long we've been dating but she's in her 20s and I'm 31 and we have the sex life of a middle-aged married couple, once a month or once every three weeks at best. She generally responds to my advances with disinterest or at worst, annoyance. Do you think there is any ways to change this or are we just not sexually compatible? Go fuck yourself. Well, my gut tells me the relationship is over and it's been over. Um, oh, you said ups and downs. You didn't say that you broke up. I ran into that. Um, yeah, you need to sit down and talk to her and just say, listen, uh, I just want to talk about her sex life. Uh, I feel like it's almost non-existent. And when I try to get something going with you, I feel like you're, uh, like I just completely turn you off. You know, did I do something? And if in general, if you're just not into me anymore, just let me know because I'm 31 and uh, I should probably try and find someone who finds me remotely attractive when you think so. It's kind of what I'm looking for in life. Somebody who actually gives a flying fuck that I'm shaking my dick in their face. Huh? See, like right there. Look, you just look down. Just the mere mention of me shaking my cock in your face. No, sorry. Yeah, that's what I would do. Do you think there's any change of this or are we just not sexually compatible? Yeah, this is all like a... All relationship shit is communication. You have to sit down. For, when you want to communicate relationship, what I've learned, the best thing to do is sit down with yourself first. All right? Driving in the car, get all the yelling out. Scream at the windshield, yeah? And what the fuck? I'm sitting there. I went over to your brother's house the other day. And what do I get? You know, just scream it. Get it all out. And then when you get all of that out, then you just do some self-analysis. And you try to break down the anger and be like, what am I really upset about? You know? What do I feel right now? I feel like I'm not being heard. I feel this. I feel that. And then, what you, then you had to have this game plan. Okay? Even if you got to make like a set list, like a fucking comedian... And you just write down what you're feeling and the points that you want to get out. Draw a smiley face at the end of it to remind yourself to not get angry because you're going to start the conversation. This works for both men and women. You're going to start the conversation. So the other person is caught off guard. So they didn't get a chance to scream at the windshield. So they might start screaming at you. So your point, your, your main thing is not to join in and have the whole thing escalate. You just want to be heard. All right. So if you, in an adult way, just tell them what you're feeling without insulting them, it's always good for the relationship, even if the relationship fucking comes to an end. Uh, you're just pressing fast forward through a bunch of pain. So there you go. So I would just sit down with her and just say, yeah, I just feel like I repulse you to the point that I'm 
you know, I feel hesitant to even even try to make a move on you. What's the deal? You know, see how that works out. All right. Roadhead accident. Hey, Bill, I took my lady out to a nice steakhouse for our anniversary. We had an awesome night. The food was expensive, but fucking great. We picked out and after it was all over, we left. We then went and seen a movie. <laughs> I don't know if that's a typo, sir, but I fucking, I know guys like you. We went out, we had all this meal, and we went out, we seen a movie. And at two hours to let our stomachs settle. I'm surprised you didn't fall asleep. I would have, if I had a giant steak dinner, I would have got the itis. Anyways, then after we left the theater, we locked eyes in the car and we immediately wanted to fuck. Jesus, dude, you're killing it. Steak dinner, movies. Now you're going to, you know, you got a woman who wants to jump on your dick. God bless you. America. Uh, so I threw the neon into drive and floored it towards home. However, she had the amazing idea to give me some roadhead before we got home. Being a dude, I had my dick out before she even got situated. Of course, after a while of her doing this, she started to gag. Being a dude, I was thinking, oh, yeah, she can't even handle this dick. Jesus Christ, this guy's sparing no details. Sorry, ladies. Uh, despite the fact that she had never gagged before. Oh, sorry. I missed the, the self-deprecating tag there. He said I was thinking she can't handle this dick, despite the fact she had never gagged before. Before I knew it. Oh, no. All right, if you're squeamish people, just shut it off now. He goes, I felt a wet sensation on my balls. As I looked down, I noticed that she had thrown up all over my dick, balls, and general crotch area. <coughs> Sorry. Wow. Here's the bullshit. She was mad at me. What the fuck? She was so upset and embarrassed. That's what it is right there, sir. About, about it that she hasn't come over in two weeks. Why is she pissed? She isn't the one that had the cleanest steak. Ah, all right, all right. Tell me what to do. Um, I got to tell you this. She's being really immature. She's embarrassed. She's embarrassed and she's not being mature about this. Where, I mean, it was a mutual thing. It's not like you grabbed her by the back of the head and just slammed her head down there, you know? She was all about it. In fact, if I, if I remember before I can get that nightmare visual out of my head, it was her idea, right? We want to fuck whoever. She had the amazing idea to give me some head. Ah, she's a trooper. You know, this is what I would do. Send her a card in the mail. All right? And just, just tell her that, you know, you miss her... I, you don't view her any differently or anything, and just 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 write something nice. I mean, I'd really like to uh, take you out for an ice cream. Even if you do throw it up all over my dick and balls later, I think it'd be kind of uh, soothing. You know, it is the summertime months, and that crotch area can get a little hot, so I wouldn't mind a little mint chocolate chip around the pubes there. All right, leave, <laughs> leave out the last part, but. I don't just send her a nice card. I wouldn't even bring up the incident. Just send her a nice card. Something cute. Nothing silly. Nothing fucking overly loving. Just something in the middle. You know what, sir? I think we actually found a new niche for Hallmark. They got to have one where there was something sexually weird happened and the other person is embarrassed and the other person d doesn't judge him and wants him back. You could have those cards. Let's see if I can come up with one here that actually rhymes. Uh... Dear lady, you got a little shady. I still love you. Uh, I don't know. You puked on my dick and balls. I don't know how to fucking get somewhere in there. Uh, wrap ups. Okay, that's a podcast for this week, everybody. Helping an ugly friend. Do you have an ugly friend? Sure, we all do. Here we go. Dear Billiam Burr, um, thanks for doing the podcast. Ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee. Thank you. Um, one of my good friends is ugly. I'll say it outright. God bless his heart. He's 26, short disproportionate face. I don't know what that means. Uh, skinny with a gut slowly forming. Oh, God. Receding hairline. Jesus. And worst of all, he doesn't take care of his teeth. Yeah. Wow. Jesus fucking Christ. All I thought of there was Clint Howard. Um, over the past couple of years, he's gotten more and more bitter about life. I believe it's due to his insecurity about his looks and attracting women. 
He has a great degree, really well-paying job, good sense of humor, and can talk to the ladies. However, he lacks the killer instinct needed to close the deal, meaning he gets friend-zoned with every girl that is possibly interested, which is very few. Well, you're kind of talking out of both sides of your mouth. If you're saying he's great with the women, but he just can't close the deal, why are there only a few women interested in him? What are you going to say? See the first paragraph where you decide to fuck... You basically described a troll. Um, myself and close friends have been subtly pushing him to work out, clean his teeth, eat health, healthy, etc. But he gets very offended whenever we suggest anything. He seems to be set on a path of thinking he is going to have to wait until his 40s before women will be desperate enough to ignore his looks and date him for his successful career. Uh, this type of attitude is starting to affect his friendships. He's getting bitter and defensive, bitter, defensive and confrontational. Nobody likes an angry troll. They really don't. Okay, if you're going to go the troll route, you know, you, you got you got to be at the very least affable. You know, working your way towards jolly, I would think. Maybe you could put on a silly hat, build some toys. I don't know. Um, as his friend, how can I help him get off this path and boost his confidence to get that killer instinct and confidence that the ladies love, even if you're if even if you're ugly. Thanks for the advice and go fuck yourself. Um. Uh, P.S. Shout out to the beautiful city of Boston. I was there last year for a hockey tournament and can't wait to go back. P.S.S. Fuck your ruins. I've lost two years of my life due to the stress of the, the Maple Leaf series. Oh, Jesus. Guy must have sent that before it was over. Um, all right. So what do you say to this guy? Oh, wow. Well, I don't know him, but at some point, you're just going to have to fucking lay it on the line and say it to him and say, like, look, you know something? You're just like me. All right. You want to have fun. You want to go sow your oats, as they say. And then you want to find love and get married and start a family. Correct. You know. You got to brush your fucking teeth. <laughs> I don't know. How, to, how do you go into it slowly? Like this is no matter how you come at it. When somebody's defensive, there's, there's no way to come at them without burning up in the atmosphere of their fucking bitterness during reentry. How do you do it? I would wait to the next time he says something bitter and or, or defensive or something like that and just look at him and be like, listen, dude, you're your own worst enemy. All right. Life is a horse race and you're shooting yours in the back of the head before the fucking gate even opens. Then you're walking around the track with mud on your shoes, you know, wondering why, uh, I don't know, why you're fucking some other horse racing thing that I don't know shit about. I picked the wrong metaphor. You know what I mean? Just wait till he's being a cunt. I remember one time I, I knew this guy. He was just negative as fucking hell. And you'd say, hey, you know something? If you keep doing this, maybe this will happen. And then he'd always be like, yeah, you know, with my luck, the fucking piano will fall on my head. And I got sick of it. And then finally I'd be like, yeah, you know, well, you know, if you think that way, that's probably going to happen. And I only said it one time, and he never talked that way again. He's still negative, but I didn't have to deal with that shit. I don't know what to do with this guy. Like, um... You might, you might have to fucking channel Patrice O'Neill. God rest his soul. Patrice O'Neill would have sat this dude down and would have said, N-word, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Look at yourself. You know, you got a fucked up face. You're losing your goddamn hair. At the very least, brush your fucking teeth. Get some fucking better clothes. What's wrong? He, I, I can't do I can't do what he would have done. He would have been able to do it. He would have hurt the guy's feelings so bad while helping him to become a better person at the same time. You might, you're going to have to come up with your own fucking version of that. You know, I, I, I don't know. What, what do you do when somebody just stops brushing their teeth? You're just tapping out on humanity. And you're saying he's smart. He has a degree. He's not one of those. Is there anything worse than somebody really smart with bad fucking hygiene? You know, those people, they're so fucking smart. They, you know, but they, they show up, they got like sleep in their eye. Oh, God. Dude, bad teeth is a goddamn deal breaker. You know? Jesus fucking Christ. You know what's funny? I'm disgusted with this guy. Don't you, don't you, don't you have any, you any fighting you? You just going to quit? Fucking asshole. I was born with orange hair. Did I quit? I got great teeth. Did I ever stop brushing? No, I didn't. I got second and third degree burns when I went out in the sun. You know? Did I stop flossing? 
I didn't. Quit fucking moping around, you ugly motherfucker. You get yourself some scope and Listerine and a fucking scrub brush. You go to a goddamn dentist, you get your fucking teeth clean. All right? When you hit on a woman, you stay on it. You keep those plates spinning. Always have a condom. Always be ready. What time is it? It's good time. Right? Do something like that. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. That fucking, there's nothing that annoys me more than watching somebody just quit. Tell him that. Tell him stop being such a fucking baby. This fucking eight-year-old sewing together his goddamn shirts. It's probably toddlers making the toothbrushes that he's not even using. Oh, poor fucking baby. You know? You don't look like John Davidson. Who gives a fuck? Brush your teeth. Shave your fucking head down. All right? Go to the gym. Give yourself a fighting chance. Stop treating yourself like you're the pirates. You know? Or running yourself like the fucking pirates do. What did I do to this goddamn thing? All right. Sorry, man. I just, I, there's just something that really fucking gets me about people who do that shit, who just fucking quit. It's nothing worse than that. Unless you really just truly suck at something. Like, you know, like you guys hear I sing. I'm terrible. But it's funny because it's the podcast. But if I was actually trying to sing professionally, that's one thing. You really should quit. <laughs> And fucking do something else for just just for your fellow man, you know. But you just just a just a quit. You're just gonna quit. I'm legitimately disgusted with that person I never met before. I don't know what to tell you. What an asshole. Ugh. Fuck, and he gets bitter. You know what that reminds me of? For some reason, there was fun. One time I was doing a show, and there was somebody in the front row that was mentally challenged. So there's no way I'm fucking with this guy. And then I get on stage, and the kid's a cunt. He starts fucking heckling me, you know? And every time I don't say anything back, he gets a little more fucking confident. And then finally, I was just like, you know what? I can't remember what the fuck I said to him. The crowd pulled back, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. They're just like everybody else, okay? Some of them are cunts, and this is a great example. So fuck you, buddy. I kind of kept it at that. It was really a fight. Oh, oh man, I, that guy fucking annoyed me. I was doing some hell gig the first time I lived out here in L.A. I'm standing in some fucking Mexican restaurant. I'm getting fucking heckled by this kid. All right? I don't even know what I'm doing living in L.A. I'm going through that fucking bullshit. But you know what? I didn't quit. I brushed my teeth before that fucking show. <laughs> Dude, when you, when you just don't brush your teeth, you just tapped out. You're just saying, fuck it. Why won't this... Wait a minute. Why won't this thing fucking load? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. You know? You guys hear me battling this shit every week. Do I fucking quit this? Loading. How do I make it go back? Oh, I was doing so well, and all I had to do was read a couple more, and I was, I was done. What if I shut it off, and then I turn it back on again? What happened? Oh, Jesus Christ. I swear to God. How, how do these things make your fucking life easier? Can somebody please explain it to me, how it makes it easier? Oh, sure. It's easier to go shopping. Or find out, you know, what your fucking neighbor jerks off to. But other than that, well, how does it make your fucking life easier? For someone like me. Hey, Nia! Nia! I know she hears me. And that's the thing that slowly kills you in a relationship. I know she fucking hears me. And I know she hears the panic in my fucking voice. And I know she knows that I need her. And she just goes, oh, I gotta hit pause. God fucking damn it. Hang on a second. Every fucking week. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Here we go. All right, experience with the threesome. All right, firstly, congrats on the podcast. Love you. Shit. All right. Um, anyways, in a recent podcast, you mentioned a guy who wants to bang another chick in front of his wife. Then you asked if someone's got some good stories. No, no, no. She wanted him to do it. Oh, by the way, somebody else gave me a great insight to that, which was uh, that his wife or girlfriend did the same thing. Said she wanted to see him have sex with another woman and it turned out that she was trying to lessen her guilt because she already fucked around on him so uh you know it's a uh tangle web being weaved here now did the pussy is um after countless efforts of hitting on this <laughs> after countless efforts of hitting on this chick in my class i found out that she was a, she was engaged so i gave it a rest not long after she started hinting sexual stuff all the time getting a little too comfortable with the touching i bet a moron with shit like this and fucked myself over to bang some random chick who turns out to be a psycho at least a couple of times. Oh, so you're sitting there going, I think this girl's giving me sexual vibes, but uh, 
I don't want to be an idiot and shit where I eat. Is that what you're saying? Well, you're not here to tell me either way, so that's what I'm going to think. So anyways, he goes, I started to question her about her man and what she really wants if she's just being a tease. Um, she said she suggested to her fiancé to have a threesome with another chick from class. Now she wants the two-dude type of deal. Tag teaming, double penetration, or whatever else you want to call it. Dude, right there. That's not your wife. Okay? That is a free fucking spirit. Okay? You bang her, and then you hand her backpack, and you let her continue walking down the road with that little saucepan. Clink, 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 clink the pots and pans, clinking off the back. Anyways, he goes, I can't say it was comfortable... So I had to lay some ground rules. No eye contact between the guys. No sword crossing, et cetera, et cetera. Dude, I got to tell you something. That what is in it for the as a guy to have a fucking two-on-one with another dude? Although I know, <laughs> I know one guy who I actually understood it because they would be doing the rotisserie with some girl. And they would, well, you know, she can't look at them, obviously, because she's busy. And what they would do is they would try to make each other laugh. <laughs> <laughs> now to me that that that's fucking hilarious um and unless you're the woman you never want to hear somebody just go <laughs> in the middle of fucking having sex with you i guess um are you laughing at my ass about a week later th let's get back to the thing here about a week later chick invited me um to the house i'm sorry i'm having more trouble than usual reading this i keep touching this fucking tablet thing here and shit just keeps popping up I don't know how to get rid of it. All right, I think we're back to normal here. So he goes, about a week later, the chick invited me to the house to prepare a presentation and asked the dude if he was okay with everything that happened. He said, well, she let me have it with another chick, so it's totally fair. Oh, okay, so you guys haven't done it yet. So did you guys come in there and dressed in, like, power suits with, like, a fucking little briefcases? <laughs> He's sitting at the end of a long table. You know, with his elbows on the table and all fingertips touching each other. And uh, how do you plan to make uh, my dick some money this week? Anyways, he goes, so I asked if he was okay with it. His eyes started getting all watery and face got red and that vein in the forehead starts popping. He says it fucks him up every time he thinks about it, but it also turned him on to a whole different level. I asked whether he still wanted to be married to her. He said he doesn't know and excused himself. I asked what her vision behind this whole shit was, and apparently she takes pleasure to see him jealous and can't do anything about it. She likes the whole watching him, watching her being fucked by a man or a woman. She doesn't want to hurt him, so she lets him in on the action, but she loves this swinging type of shit a lot more. Oh, my God. So wait a minute. So you did it. Right? Dude, you, you're writing, you're leaving out words here, and you're making a dumb guy sound even worse here. Let me go back up. About a week later, a chick invited me to the house to prepare a presentation, and I asked the dude if he was okay with everything. That happened. Oh, my fault. I read it wrong. Or I wasn't listening my, as I was talking because I was so nervous about fucking up the next sentence. Oh, my God. Dude, what the fuck is wrong with you that you went back? You know, like you're doing some follow-up survey. This whole thing is weird. So when he goes, well, let's just say things were awesome in my shoes, but I felt a little bad that they broke up. Dude, you know what you did? You just saved a fucking soul. The soul that the two of them were going to fucking make, okay? That soul will go into a fucking different person. I don't, I don't know how it works. I'm not a religious guy. But, yeah, you just stopped a kid from being brought into the world by, uh, by a couple of fucking people who need to go to therapy, I think. I guess I'm judging. I don't know what. Those aren't parents. Anyways, funny thing is, he still come, he still goes over to fuck her and another partner. Sometimes even another couple partners swapping thing. Basically, swinger fuck buddies. Oh, yeah, well, you opened Pandora's box. Now, no pun intended. Now it's no biggie to him. He goes, I wouldn't call them freaks. They're awesome people. But this type of shit doesn't usually work out for the best in relationships, let alone a marriage. Excuse my bad grammar and poor descriptive skills. Well, you know what? You should have started your email with that so everyone wouldn't think that it was me. Wow, man, I've never been involved in any, any shit like that. I never had a threesome or anything. I think I could have had two. I'd said this before. One of them, I was so young and stupid. I was actually annoyed with the other girl going, why won't she fucking leave so I can bang her friend? You know, I didn't get that she was lingering around. Uh, that one kills me because they were both fucking great looking. And then the other one was 
was a layup, but one was fucking gorgeous, and the other one looked like a goddamn refrigerator. <laughs> she was like fucking 6'2". One of those rich people refrigerators, you know what I mean? That's just built into the fucking wall. That's what she looked like, and it's just like, I, you know, I would need one of those, like, some rock climbing shit to fucking handle that one, so I, I gracefully bowed out of that. Um... Yeah, that's that's an entire. Let me ask you this, sir. Do you live in Atlanta? I always get that fucking freak vibe in Atlanta. Anyways, here we go. Philosophy workshop. I'm doing a uh, philosophy workshop this summer called Rape Jokes and Other Effects. Dude, what is with all this fucking babbling about rape jokes? I swear to fucking Christ, I go to comedy clubs all the time. Like you're making it seem like every five seconds somebody talks about it. You know, these fucking idiot bloggers blogging about what kind of fucking joke. Do you understand how fucking dumb that is? That's like if you played guitar and you start blogging about what chords people sh should and shouldn't use. Good fucking... It's, it's, it's not even frustrating. It's just... It's bizarre. It's really bizarre, and I've yet to see anybody... I don't know. Anybody that's kind of doing anything or who's considered funny that's really going around telling people what they should talk about. I would, why don't you work on your own act? You know? If you don't like rape jokes, don't do any. I don't like country music. I would never say don't do fucking country music. It's, it's bizarre. The whole fucking, it, the whole thing is just fucking, I, you know, I'm going to stop talking about this because I'm just going to add fuel to the fire. Um, let's just blow through these dumb questions here. Can people be inappropriately offended? If so, how do we draw the line between a pro? This is so fucking stupid. Don't go to a comedy club. Oh my God, I went to the pool and I got wet. Is there a way to make the pool drier? Um, how wet is too wet? Is being offended a moral response? If what kind of response? If you're morally wrong, someone, it's appropriate for you to feel guilt. Who is, is this one of these bloggers who wrote this? I find that whole thing unbelievably childish and silly. I'm not even going to give it any fucking time of day. What about chickens? What about the chickens who died and you're talking about eating a chicken BLT? Um, anyways, plowing ahead here. Uh, met girl last week of school. Hey, Bill, this past weekend, I made out with this girl I've been talking to at school. Since then, we've been talking nonstop, and I really like her, and I think she likes me. Oh, isn't this nice? But in a little more than a week, we will both be graduating. She lives in Philly, and I live right outside of New York. Well, you can kiss that pussy goodbye. Sorry, that was me. All right. She's really cool and different than all the other girls at school. I'm just wondering what you think I should do. This upcoming week is senior is senior week. You know what? I shouldn't have said that. You actually like this girl. I apologize. I'm an idiot. Um, this up, I'm going to treat her with respect for the rest of this, for the rest of this fucking email. Um, this upcoming week is senior week, a week full of drinking and nonstop partying until graduation. I know we're going to be hanging out all week, and I just want to get your thoughts on what I should do after graduation. I really like her. She's pretty smart and is into a lot of the same stuff I am. Anywho, thanks for everything. Big fan of you and the podcast, and I just watched Stand Up Guys. Hilarious. Oh, thank you. Uh, that sound you make when you get shot made me laugh so hard. Yeah, got shot in the hand. You're not going to make a graceful noise. Um, all right, where, where are we going here? Um, what do we do here? You know what, sir? You're at that time in your life where you have to figure this shit out. Um, you, you can't ask someone as old and as jaded as me, because you heard what I said right out of the, out of the gate. It was fucking insensitive and it was mean and it had nothing to do with you or the wonderful woman that you're dating it had to do with me and the train wreck of my fucking dating career all right so there's your lesson here's your lesson something that i learned uh tom papa taught me this one anytime he said anytime i make a big decision in my life and i tell people about it i realize that most of the time their reaction has nothing to do with what i'm doing it has everything to do with them so i say look if you like this girl you know, it's the long distance thing is really hard. You're going to go to, they're both going, you guys are both going to different colleges. I mean, it's like a fucking nightclub. And just all these single people. Like, call, you're never going to be in a greater nightclub than college. And it's just a shame that when you're going through it, you don't realize it. It's just, you have the pick of the litter, you know? But the problem is, is you're, you're, you're I don't know, you, you want all these experiences. You're just getting out from underneath your parents. They, they should really have college like when you're 25, 26, all right? And just make it illegal to get married until then, you know? And just kind of have a good time, figure out what the fuck you want. Then you go to college, and you got this, you pick up all these fucking people. Maybe not 26, by then you're a little bit, 
I don't know. It's just everybody kind of in the prime of their life before they get jaded and that type of shit. So uh, I w you know what I would do, sir? I would follow your heart. That's my advice. And I wouldn't listen to old grizzled asshole like myself. All right? Good luck to you. I hope it all works out. Um, yeah, you follow your heart. You'll never be wrong. You can still get hurt, but you're not wrong. Because everybody hurts. Sorry. Um, wife is getting heavy. Oh, Jesus. Dear Bildo. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get that at first. <laughs> ah, shit. I didn't get that. That's fucking hilarious. I, I, didn't, I read it, and it didn't make sense until it came out of my mouth. I saw Doe, D-O-E, like Doe, what dear? I was like, what is he calling me, a fucking Bambi or something? I didn't get it. Oh, my God, that's fucking funny. Um, love the podcast. You're, stand -up. <laughs> You're the, the best guest on Rogan, yada, yada. All right, I'm a 26-year-old feller from Maine. Due to tie the knot in October with my lady of seven years, and we have a great relationship and are very happy. Well, congratulations, sir. You've hit the lottery. You're living in God's country. You know, you got yourself a great woman. You got a great start here. Where is the left turn coming, everybody? Let's continue reading. She's smart and didn't take shit from no one. She has uh, stuck with me, supported me through my oxy cotton addiction, of course. Fucking made. You know what? I was going to do, I had a small part in a movie. I was going to do something called Blue Potato last September, and it didn't. the dates didn't end up working out. It was all about the oxy problem up there in Maine. Um, so look for that movie because the fucking script was great. There you go. There's a little inside Hollywood shit. All right, here we go. Um, she helped me get through my, through, helped me get throughout when my mom died. All right, this guy did some oxy. And when he was doing the oxy, he did not take a spelling class. All right, let's, let's back up here. Help me get through when my mom died. She stuck with me and helped me raise and support my niece from the time she was born till present. Oh yeah, this girl's a champ. My niece is now almost four. And now helping me support... You're jumping back and forth here, sir. So now this wonderful woman... I'm going to help you out here. She's now helping me support my father, who can't work due to him dying with multiple melanoma marrow cancer. Bone marrow cancer. Jesus Christ. Uh, not melanoma. Myeloma. Bone cancer. I don't know how to read that word, sir. Oh, Jesus. Bill, just get to the end of this fucking thing so we can all stop staring awkwardly down at our pen and pencil set. Okay, guys, here we go. All of this while holding a full-time job and going to college to be a psychological nurse. Psychological nurse, okay. Uh, Bill, she is an angel, and I don't know what I would do without her, but I have one little problem. Over the last few years, she's been putting on the pounds. She loves to eat. I, Dude, I read in the beginning of this, wife is getting heavy, and I'm like, where's the left turn? I have the memory of a fucking ant. Jesus Christ, Bill. Stop talking on the cell phone. Anyways, uh, she's been putting on the pound. She loves to eat. I guess she stresses out with everything, but she's gained a lot of weight in the last three years. I'm talking at least 80 pounds. No, you can't have that. Can't have that. 80 pounds, I mean, she's almost morbidly obese. 100 pounds is like morbidly obese. 30 pounds is obese. So she's going to fucking die. Um, anyways, you got to the point where she almost weighed more than me, and I'm not a small guy. Six feet, 240, but in, in shape for the most part. I've got at least five inches height on her and only weigh 10 to 15 pounds more than her. I'm not... It's not making me not want to tie the knot with her, but if we're going to do it for the long haul, I don't want her to have a heart attack at the age of 40. How do I bring this up? Because as all men know, you don't bring up a woman's weight. Uh, help me dollar dollar bills. All right. I'll tell you. This is how you do it. You need to lose some weight, right? All right. How do you do this? What you got to do is you bring her in the fold by talking about your own shortcomings with you, you, you know, whatever weight problem you have. Because what are you? You're six feet, 240. You know, dude, you could stand to lose a good 25, 30 yourself, you know? Get down to that 215, 210. You know? You guys are getting married. Just say, you know what? Let's fucking, uh, you know, watch one of those late night things. And just get her into it. You know what? This is what you do first. I got it. This is what I would do with her. Uh, you got all, you're, you're living up there in Maine. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just say you want to take her on a picnic. She likes food. All right, well, you don't say this is going to be a mile-long hike. <laughs> and when she opens the picnic basket, you got Brussels sprouts in there, right? No, you can't do it like that. But I, I would start enjoying the outdoors more, and I would get into some activities. And what I would do is um, just slowly, if you guys are living together, just 
start introducing healthier fucking foods into the fridge and the cabinets and toss another shit and um, just see how that works. And if she calls you on it, you just got to come clean. Just say, honey, I love you to death. You're the woman of my dreams. I want to marry you. And the last thing I ever want to do is hurt you. And I just don't know how to bring up that I'm concerned that I'm going to lose you. And she'll be like, what are you talking about? And if you just bring it up with the fact that you're concerned that you're going to lose her someday. Um, and you bring it into the weight thing. And then when she cries or whatever, blah, blah, hold her, tell her you love her and just say, listen, I got to lose some weight too. You help me through the oxy thing. All right. To the point I'm kind of paunchy right now. Let's, let's get our weight down for these kids we don't have yet. You know, just do that. Try that. I'll see, see how that fucking works. And if it blows up in your face, I, I apologize. But I got to tell you that, that, that hiking thing's a little sneaky, you know, start going for walks. If you hold your, their hand, they don't notice that they're hiking. You know, <laughs> that's what you do. Hold her hand, hand, hold her hand, and then have, have a guitar that you go fucking acoustic guitar. You got it thrown around your back like you're going to serenade her. And she'll just be so blown away, she won't notice that you walk three miles up a mountain. You know, and then when you get up there, you just you sing that. The bear went over the mountain. <laughs> and all that he could see. Uh, I'm sorry. Girlfriend going to Vegas alone. Oh, God. Oh, uh, as Joe DeRosa says, you hate to see it. Oh, you hate to see it. I got to have him. I'm going to be going to New York next week. I should have him on the podcast next week. I should really do that. I'm going I'm to reach out to Joe. You know, I'm actually going to reach out to his people and see if they can get in touch with Joe. He's just finishing the European leg of his latest, uh, his latest CD. Smash it. What was it called? Something Personal, I believe is what he put it out as. Anyways, my girlfriend of two years and I have a great relationship. We're in our 30s and get along better than anyone I've dated before. I have no complaints. You guys always start this shit. Like, guys go always just like, I fucking love her. She's fucking great, but, you know, she has a dick. All right. He goes, I have no complaint with the way things are going. Neither of us are looking at marriage in the future. She's divorced and doesn't want to try again, and I've never intended to get married. Well, then what? You guys, you fuck buddies. He goes, we just enjoy each other's company, and I couldn't be happy with her. Here's the thing. She still gets the urge to go out and dance to blow off some steam sometime, but I avoid it. It's not that I don't know how to dance, but let's just say that I partied my way through college and immersing myself in that scene again only gets me into trouble with those mood-enhancing substances. Uh, she's got a great job, and unlike me, can afford to go on a little vacation. She picked Vegas. And no, I'm not the least bit worried about her banging some other dude. She's into the ladies. Oh, she is. And has, an unwavering per and has my unwavering permission to go out and have her fun with them as long as she's safe about it. A threesome has always been on the table in the past, but I honestly think I'd opt out just so we don't have the potential for any jealousy to show its face in our relationship. That's, that's a smart move. Watching is good enough for me. Um, anyway, back to the issue at hand. I have no issues with her going, but I'm worried that I'm not fulfilled, fulfilling her need to go out and party. That's what I was going to say. Um, I was actually going to suggest that. Uh, he said, let me go back here. I'm not fulfilling her need to go out and party at the club every so often and don't want it to build into a serious problem. She doesn't go clubbing on the regular. This is her first time doing anything like this since we started dating. Do I need to grow the fuck up, put my past behind me, and start taking my lady out to the club, or I just let her keep going out on her own? I think it's perfectly normal for two people in a relationship to have activities that they do on their own. I'm into outdoor sports, and so she, she's into going dancing. We both need our adrenaline source uh, outside of our great sex life together. She says she's not planning on hooking up with a lady while she's out there, and I wouldn't care either way. But I am setting my, but am I setting myself up for failure in the future, not taking her out myself? Or do I just let her go and let her have her fun? Uh, I would tell her what you told me. Just say, listen, I did the party scene in college. In college. No, start with saying, like, listen, I'm worried that because I don't take you out dancing, eventually that's going to lead to X, Y, and Z. Um, and I have to tell you that the reason why I take you out is not because the reason I don't take you out is not because I don't want to take you out. It's because I did the college partying scene, and I'm worried that if I go into that scene again, I'm going to get in trouble with, you know, whatever drugs you were using. You know, so much of this relationship shit is just fucking taking a deep breath and just saying it. You know, saying why you're doing whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. And, uh, you know, you can't fuck with honesty. I mean, you can be upset by it. <laughs> I want to fuck your friend. There, it's out there. 